when we think of population, it's really important to recognize the different way that population dynamics have an impact on climate fragility and risks. And it really is looking above and beyond population growth. We know that population growth is an important uh, component and we, um, together with partners, have done an analysis of population growth pressures globally uh, and have looked at the degree to which they relate to an ability to adapt to climate change uh, in terms of what it means in terms of demand for water and water stresses and agricultural productivity. And that analysis has produced a global map of population and climate change hotspots that demonstrate that most of the pressures are in sub-Saharan Africa. But when we look at population pressures, particularly in, on the continent in Africa, for example, we know that it's not just population growth, it's also a question of age structure and the youth bulge, which carries a very important dimension for climate fragility and risks in terms of youth being able to mobilize, be mobilized and engage in terrorist activities and whether there is a real connection there. When we look at population dynamics, we also recognize the importance of mobility, migration, and displacement. And we know that this is an important component of population questions that is currently getting a lot of attention and is directly tied to climate change impacts and potential conflict and security dimensions. A final component of population dynamics is looking at the important role of women and gender in climate policies and the degree to which we're able to bring women into conflict resolution work and peace building efforts. And this is another very important dimension. So I'm sometimes fearful that folks only focus on population growth, but there's a real need to systematically and purposefully look at population dynamics overall and make the very important, salient and current connections to climate change and security dimensions uh, now and for the immediate future. When we think of what might come out of Paris and, and given recent discussions we've had at a planet security conference that was recently held in The Hague, we look at, at what it means in terms of climate fragilities and risks and what are the diplomatic and technical tools that we have available that will enable us to respond. So we know that analytically we have been able to establish some causality not always direct, it's indirect. And because it's indirect, it means from a diplomatic perspective, there are different levers and points of entry to make a difference. I think in a recent report that we have worked on that was commissioned by the G7, we talk about these in terms of a series of compound risks that relate to food security, that relate to unintended consequences, that relate to um, volatility in markets, for example. So those are really very important points of entry where we know the diplomatic um, responses can make a difference now. And I think um, the diplomat that we work with need to have very concrete and specific tools and see the value of those tools that they can use now. So, for example, we were recently discussing these dynamics of the Sahel and in talking to diplomats who are working along um, fragilities in terms of ethnic divisions, they said to me, you know, Roger Mark, I can go into these communities and we can work on conflict resolution mechanisms but at the same time, we have to be cognizant of other issues like youth mobilization into terrorist activities. And there are certain groups that we cannot interact with because they're blacklisted among diplomatic circles. So there's an added level of complexity which provides a very sophisticated diplomatic roadmap that needs to be dynamic and responsive but presents huge opportunities and tremendous wins if we figure it out soon.